YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Sergi J in 4K. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute since we've done an upload, so I do thank you for sticking with me. Today, we do have an unboxing and a first hands-on impression of the Google Pixel Fold. Finally got this in the mail. It's been a minute, ordered this a while ago. We're gonna go ahead and discuss it. Let's go. All right. Now, I know I had a few people that have been asking to do a overhead video. So I finally went ahead and got an overhead rig. So we have here the box. Again, just the standard one. I'm pretty sure you've seen an unboxing some, and this won't take too long, but we'll go ahead, we'll do it. So we have the Pixel Fold, back of the box, pretty blank, just says Team Pixel. Now, obviously, if you've ever seen a Pixel unboxing, you do have the two tabs here on the side. Now, <clears throat> here's one thing. I mean, I've been trying to find a secondary phone forever. Um, I've been an iPhone user now for pretty much any iPhone that's ever come out in the past. I've basically almost had every single one of them. So this year, 2023, I've had several Droid, Android phones that I've been testing, <laughs> and I just haven't found the one. So I started the year with the S23 Ultra. Wasn't a fan, ended up returning that. I then switched pretty much to the uh, the S, excuse me, the Fold 4. The Fold 4 was a nice phone. I definitely felt like it was something that was, I guess you could say a game changer, but I just didn't like the actual outer screen to it. The outer screen to it was, it was a lot taller than I'm used to. So I wasn't a fan of that, ended up returning that. Prior to this, while I was waiting for this to come in, I had the Pixel 7 Plus, uh, excuse me, the 7 Pro, which was nice. And then, of course, I'm going with this. Um, I can tell you, you know, being an iPhone user, I do prefer the stock Android experience, which is why Pixels pretty much stand out to me. Um, I decided to go with a second phone just because, you know, having an iPhone forever, you know, if you've ever had an iPhone, which a lot of us have, obviously, they don't really come out with too much new technology year after year. So, I mean, you're basically getting the same product. So, we have, obviously, the phone here. I guess I shouldn't be talking as much. <laughs> but we have the phone here. I'm opening it up to see if there's any, anything else besides this here. Um, which looks like there is, but I really can't tell you what it is. Maybe it's just padding or a box of some sort. Yeah, just padding. <laughs> so probably the same thing on this here. We won't worry about that. You have the booklet. And then, of course, most of these phones come with nowadays. All you get is the cord itself, which is, eh, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, obviously I would like to have a charger, or the brick in there, but it doesn't have the brick. And then, of course, you have the transfer cable here. These are used if you're transferring from another device, which I like to set these up as brand new. And then of course, what we've all been waiting for, we have the Pixel Fold. Now, I was able to see this in store, so this actually isn't my first time seeing one hands-on, but I do like the form factor to this. What I like is when I had the Pixel 7 Pro, I liked that, but what I didn't like was that through the back, you get a bunch of hand fingerprints all over, whereas this is kind of like an actual that's not glossy. It's kind of like a, um, a glass look. So very, very nice. You have obviously the cameras, three cameras set up, and you have the front screen there. And then obviously we have the full display there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Let's go ahead and um, I'll do that. I'll do that off camera, but I'll go ahead and we'll do the initial turn on here as well. I did hit the power button, right? <laughs> From an initial standpoint as far as in hand feels great I mean this to me is a usable screen you know I mean I have the full-size iPhone 7 or excuse me 14 Pro Max this obviously very usable because you do have pretty much I want to say it's like a what 5.7 inch front display and then obviously the inside is a little bigger but I like the fact that it actually folds fully closed as you see there that's awesome so let's go ahead and let me set this up and we'll be right back all right, so I went ahead and I unboxed the phone and you know pretty much set it all up to have all my apps. I'm actually shooting this a day later from the unboxing just because I had some other things to do and I you know needed some time to set everything up. But initial impressions, I can tell you the outside form factor when it's closed is awesome. This to me is almost like the perfect sized phone. I'm used to using the iPhone 14 Pro Max that I've been using since release date. And I mean, look at the difference there. <laughs> You're looking at a difference that is a few inches, definitely. But I mean, with this, I feel like, you know, everything's easily accessible. Whereas the iPhone's not bad, don't get me wrong, but I mean, you know, I definitely need to sometimes move in the middle. Some people use pop sockets. 
If you have a bigger hand, I guess it's not a problem. <laughs> but with this, this actually feels like the perfect size of a device. And then of course, if you want, and you know, this is what you get a foldable for, phone for, is you do obviously have the form factor that you can go ahead and pop it out on the inside, you know, pretty much if you wanted to use it for anything. One thing I do myself, I'm a photographer, so I do a lot of editing in Lightroom. Lightroom is pretty cool because you do get, you know, all the apps that you can pretty much edit there. And this is a full size. So, I mean, it looks very good, works fluid. And of course, you know, from this, you know, most of the apps, you know, do work unfolded like this to where it takes up the full screen. Occasionally though, you will run into apps, for example, like let's go to Goat, for example. Goat doesn't open in the full display. Um, it uses a lot of it, but it still has, you still have the edges here to where it's not being used. That of course, that's unfortunate, just because, you know, most, um, you know, other foldables, do have apps that pretty much work to where they use the full screen. Like when I had the Z Fold 4, that did use the full screen for all, uh, not all of the apps, excuse me, the majority of them. The one thing that surprises me though, is Google's own apps, not all of them fully stretch out. <laughs> this is, it's just weird to me, mind blowing, considering that Google, you know, makes Android and obviously this is their device. So you think that they would be able to go ahead and make sure that at least their apps showed full display. Not the case. Uh, the weather app, if you've had any Pixel devices before, this is new for this actual phone. This is actually pretty cool. I, I love this layout. You're pretty much getting all the weather information there to where you can flip you know, between all the dates and then all the information for the day you're on here. I think that's pretty awesome. Camera-wise, the cameras themselves, I haven't noticed too many issues with. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're on the same, same level as the actual Pixel 7 Pro, but they are still pretty good. Um, I don't have any reviews to show you as of now, sample-wise or anything, but I can tell you it is still pretty good from, you know, for, for being a foldable. Comparing it to the Z Fold 4, uh, the cameras on that, I don't feel were very good. I mean, I I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who thinks that, but from my usage with it for the two, three weeks I had it, they weren't definitely something that stood out to me, especially the camera on the inside. Camera on the inside on the Z Fold 4 is actually under the display. So you're actually not getting a pretty good camera, not in my opinion. I think it was only like, what, two, three megapixels, maybe four. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section, but it's not that high. <laughs> now, for initial impressions, as I mentioned, yeah, I'm definitely very good. I mean, my usage in the past in the day that I've had this, 90% of it, I would say, has come folded like this. <laughs> Just because of the fact, again, I'll, I'll pretty much sound like a broken record saying it, but this to me is the perfect size for a phone just because you could pretty much use everything to where it's still comfortable. You know, you have access to Instagram, all your other apps that you use, and they still feel like actual, you know, like it's meant to actually be like a regular phone. Whereas with the Z Fold 4, you don't get that experience. You're getting pretty much a much narrower screen, so it doesn't feel, I don't know, in my opinion, it doesn't feel fluid as it does on this device. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll be testing this out more. Um, you know, this is a phone, I, I don't plan on returning this. I have returned pretty much every other Android I've bought this year. <laughs> so this one I do plan on keeping. So if you want to see more reviews or, you know, I guess you could say like a two week, month update, three month update on this device, go ahead and definitely subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button as well. I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, other than that, guys, it's your boy Sergi J and I'm checking out. Have a good day.